Let's go on to the next question. On number 5, they say, the curve C has polar equation, R is equal to ln of 1 plus pi minus theta for values of theta ranging between 0 and pi. So on part A, sketch C and state the polar coordinates of the point of C furthest from the pole. Alright. So we are going to make use of a table of values and I am going to have intervals within the range 0 to pi which are intervals of of size a quarter pi so it's 0 a quarter pi half pi 3 quarter pi up to pi so I have those values in the table and I'm going to substitute each one of these values into the equation r is equal to ln of 1 plus pi minus theta and when we do, when theta is 0, r will come out as 1.4 to one decimal place. When theta is a quarter pi, we get that r will be equal to 1.2. When theta is half pi, r will be 0 0.9. When theta is 3 quarter pi, r will be 0 0.6. And when theta has a value of pi, r will have a value of 0. And we're going to plot these points on our polar plane. And we can see that the graph comes out like this. So I'm going to put the graph right on here in this space. So this is theta equal to zero and we have the pole right here. I'm going to extend the pole just a little, but the pole is here. So the graph comes out like this according to what we had in the sketch. All right. Now the question says we should state the polar coordinates of the point of C furthest from the pole. Now the point furthest from the pole should be this point here. And that's when theta is equal to zero. So when theta is equal to zero, R will be ln of one plus pi and theta will be zero. So these are the coordinates of the point furthest from the pole. Let's move on to part B. So it says, using the substitution, u is equal to 1 plus pi minus theta, or otherwise, show that the area of the region enclosed by C and the initial line is half of 1 plus pi ln 1 plus pi of ln of 1 plus pi minus 2 plus pi. All right. So this is integration by substitution. We've been given the substitution u is equal to 1 plus pi minus theta, which means that du by the theta is equal to minus 1, which means that in place of d theta, we can put minus du. We can also consider the um, limits, okay, theta and u. According to the question, original question, the limits are 0 and pi. So 0 and pi. All right. So since u is equal to 1 plus pi minus theta, when uh, theta is equal to 0, um, u will be 1 plus pi or pi plus 1. And when theta is pi, um, u will be 1. So we have 1. All right. So we know that um, area is found by the integral from alpha to beta of half r squared with respect to theta. And in this particular case, uh, we will be having... Okay, I want you to take note of the fact that this was the lower limit and upper, but when we substitute, when we do use the substitution and the sign change, this is now the upper limit and this one is the lower limit. So to account for that, I'll put a minus, okay? And the half, I'll factor it out in the integral from one to pi plus one. And now of R squared, now, 
from the original curve, r is ln of 1 plus pi minus theta. So r squared should be ln of 1 plus um, pi minus theta. But remember, 1 plus pi minus theta is u. So it's just ln u squared of d theta. But in place of d theta, we put minus du according to this. Okay, so we essentially have a half of the integral from 1 to pi plus 1, all right, of ln u squared with respect to u. Okay, so this is what we have. So we're going to use integration by parts here. So we're going to say that's integration by parts. Right, so we're going to say, let u be equal to, okay, I'm going to use different colors cause, so that there's no conflict. Let u be equal to, so I don't want you to confuse it with this u, okay? Uh, just It's just for the sake of uh, us applying the integration by parts formula. So u is lin u and dv by dx b ln of u again it's a product remember so d u by let's just say d u by small d u this is small d u okay is one over u and here we'll get v to b if we integrate lin u we get u lean u minus u okay now carrying it on like from here i'll just copy this and place it down here okay like this wait can you explain the integration part okay of lean u yeah okay all right so you need to know that um when you're integrating lin okay Lin x with respect to x, you do by parts again. You say let u be equal to lin x and dv by dx be equal to 1 because lin x is 1 lin x. So du by dx is 1 over x and v integrating 1, we get x. So by parts, it will be um, integral of lin x with respect to x is uv, which is x lin x minus the integral of v times du by dx. So 1 over x times x is 1. So basically, it's like we are integrating 1 with respect to x. So it's x lin x minus integrating 1 is x. So if you integrate lin x with respect to x, you'll get x lin x minus x. So that is the same thing here. If we integrate lin u, we get u lin u minus u. Okay, I get it. Okay. All right, so this is going to be equal to, uh, by parts, half of uh, uv. We do these two, which would be u lin u minus u of lin u, u lin u minus u, of lin u, okay? And the limits are one and pi plus one, and that's minus the integral from one to pi plus one of the product of this two, the product of this two, of these two, which will be one over u times lin u is lin u, so it's essentially lin u minus 1, all right? So it's like we're integrating lin u minus 1 with respect to u. So this is essentially a half of u of lin u squared minus u lin u with the limits 1 pi plus 1 minus integrating lin u is u lin u minus u minus u 
So essentially, we have minus 2u inside from 1 to pi plus 1. All right. We can even combine this into, okay, we have a half outside. We shouldn't leave that out. And we can combine the whole thing into u of lin u squared minus u lin u minus u lin u is minus 2 u lin u and minus of minus 2 u it's plus 2 u and 1 pi plus 1. Okay, so we are saying from here we substitute 1 plus pi so it's a half okay of pi plus 1 of len of pi plus 1. Okay, it's squared, so I'll put another len of pi plus 1. And that's minus 2 of pi plus 1 of len of pi plus 1 plus 2 of pi plus 1. All right, and that's minus. Now substituting 1 into this whole thing. This becomes 0, this becomes 0. And here we'll be having plus 2. So actually it becomes minus 2 since we are subtracting. All right. I'll close bracket. All right. Now I'm going to apply half into the whole bracket. We'll be having, all right, pi plus actually half of pi plus 1 len of pi plus 1 squared. So that's like of len of pi plus 1. And that's minus pi plus 1 len of pi plus 1, and that's going to be plus pi plus 1, all right? And that's minus 1, because it's being multiplied by a half, all right? So I'm going to factor out a half of pi plus 1 of len of pi plus 1, okay? So if I factor it out on here, what will remain is len of pi plus 1 minus, if I factor out this thing on here, we will just be left with a 2, minus 2, minus two close bracket. And this pi plus 1 minus 1 is pi. And I'm sure that's the exact thing they have that, that they want us to prove, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. It is. So that's exactly how we do it right on here. Okay, what do you think of this? I just don't like color coordinates. It's <laughs> annoying. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do, especially the integration part. So a little bit more practice is required. Now, on part C, they say, show that at the point of C, furthest from the initial line, 1 plus pi minus theta of ln of 1 plus pi minus theta minus tan theta is equal to 0. Okay. All right. So we're talking about the point furthest from the initial line. And that's when dy by d theta is equal to zero. So we have to express the, uh, the equation in the form y in terms of theta. So r is equal to len of one plus pi minus theta is the original equation. And we know that y is equal to r sine theta. So essentially, um, this leads to r being y over sine theta. So therefore, y over sine theta is equal to ln of 1 plus pi minus theta. So y is equal to ln of 1 plus pi minus theta of sine theta. So when we do dy by d theta, 
It's a product, sine theta, times the derivative with respect to theta of ln of 1 plus pi minus theta, all right, plus ln of 1 plus pi minus theta, times the derivative with respect to theta of sine of theta. Okay, so that's um, sine theta of differentiating this um, will give us minus 1 over 1 plus pi minus theta. And that's going to be plus ln of 1 plus pi minus theta of cos theta. Now remember, all this is equal to 0. Now we're going to multiply both sides by this, by 1 plus pi minus theta, all the terms. So we will be having minus of sine theta plus 1 plus pi minus theta of ln of 1 plus pi minus theta cos theta equal to 0. And we're going to divide all the terms by cos theta. And when we do that, we'll be having minus tan theta here, all right, plus 1 plus pi minus theta of ln of 1 plus pi minus theta, these two cancel, equal to 0. Now, that's what they want us to prove, isn't it? That's it. Let's just rearrange. Therefore, this leads us to having 1 plus pi minus theta of ln of 1 plus pi minus theta minus tan theta equal to 0. Okay, and that's shown. All right. So now that we have shown this, okay, I'll say here shown. <laughs> we will then go on to verify that this equation has a root between 1.2 and 1.3. So we can just say, do we have space? Not anymore. Let f of theta be equal to 1 plus pi minus theta ln of 1 plus pi minus theta minus tan theta. And then we, uh, we find f, they say which values, 1.2 and 1.3, f of 1.2 equals, and f of 1.3. All right. Okay, did you do I this? Have the yeah, okay, yes. I have the answers. Okay, what, do, um, what do we get for yeah. f of 1.2? For 1.2, it's 0 0.602. And 1.3? 1 1.3 is negative 0 0.634. So there's a sign change, right? Yes. Which means that there's a, um, it, it actually means that the root, there's a root between those two, between 1.2 and 1.3. So that's how we, we do this question.